Good evening, Mask Enjoyers. I hope you're right, because it's time for Proper Review. And in this instance, I'm doing it live on my stream, so get ready to say hello there, chat. Yep, they're already doing it. Good job there, Mr. Jordan. Right, so Proper Review. Last week, we discussed the August 22, 2024 Rust Tour, and that means today we're here to talk about the likes of the August 29, 2024 Rust Tour. So sit back, relax. I'm going to start yapping. But before I do, some of you might be sitting there wondering, Wait, what's this all about? Well, hang on a minute. What are we here for? Well, don't worry, I'll explain. Basically, with every Rust Tour that we have, I will return to it four weeks later and just see how everything turned out now maybe certain things didn't match up to expectations and if that's the case i have to explain and also don't forget with every rust store that we have hedge makes predictions in regards to what potentially might be a nice investment was he correct and if he isn't you can hold me accountable you can laugh at me chat if you so wish sounds good right then let's proceed so this was a very big rust store what was my initial reaction well okay uh, lovely, interesting collection continuations. Lots of clothing and armor. So Commando Hoodie and Pants, that's an interesting collection continuation. Heavy Knight, another consecutive collection continuation. We've got the Tier 3. So that bode, that boded well for the potentially seeing even more potential skins down the line. It basically took the role from Ultramarine. Do you notice how we don't have an Ultramarine skin here? Yeah, the combo breaker happened. But then Heavy Knight seemingly took its place. All right, cool. Uh, two Sheep Metal Doors being accepted in the same Rust store again. Bit odd, but it is what it is. And with the likes of Hoodie and Pants and Tier 3, we also got, you know, primitive skins. Rainbow Pony, primitive. Huh. Would that work out all right? Would that be interesting? Well, you know, we'll have to wait and see. And then we saw the likes of the Abyss Hunting Bow. So initially... We saw that this was accepted with all the other skins on the workshop, but then it didn't appear in the Rust store. There were some problems with the naming convention that led to even more problems on the Steam market. Now, we'll talk more about that in a bit, but that had a funny start, and we'll be talking about that, don't you worry. So, okay, a big batch of Rust skins in this Rust store. Couldn't complain, very happy with the variety, but what was my initial thoughts in regards to what potentially was the best investments what was my predictions? So I was looking at all of these skins, and by default, I thought to myself, I think Heavy Knight's going to be in a very, very, very interesting spot, because it had three consecutive acceptances up to this point, and over the course of the previous weekend, we saw the likes of Boots and Gloves being accepted. Uh, boots and Gloves being submitted. So the question was, was it going to be accepted? Hmm. Were they going to be next? Hmm. So yeah, I had to consider that, and I thought, you know what? With what I see in there, and as I basically said, it basically took the role of what Ultramarine had with all its con con uh, constant continuations. I felt confident. I thought the Boots of Glass were likely going to happen. And then eventually, of course, we could still see potentially the likes of Tier 2 armor for Heavy Knight Collection. So th things were looking optimistic. That was cool. That's why that was the main thing I considered in terms of what might potentially be the best investment. And if I could just quickly hop back over to here. So, yep, this is the uh, investing predictions video for August 29. As I scroll down, I can remind myself that the second thing I was looking at was the Commando Clothing. Yes. Another black collection, or rather a continuation, because please remember this. Commando Tier 3 was accepted like a month before this, but then Black Diamond also got Tier 3 accepted like three weeks later. That was odd. And unfortunately, after that, Commando Tier 3 kind of dropped in value. But then we saw the Hoodie and Pants being accepted. Oh, okay, then cool. Suddenly, Commando Tier 3 bounces back up. New continuation, core pieces appear. Okay, yeah, so yeah, that went and bounced back up to its Rust Store price. I managed to get my money back after making a bit of losses with my buy orders. But I just couldn't help but assume, couldn't Black Diamond also appear at some point? Couldn't Black Diamond potentially take away all the attention that the Commando just got here? <laughs> I'll talk more about that in a bit. So, all right, regardless, we could still look towards the likes of potentially seeing Commando Boots and Gloves or Tier 2 on the horizon. By default, had to sit there and say it was perfectly fine to consider as an investment. And then uh, I looked at the likes of Abyss Bow. So I thought maybe with another Abyss weapon, could that basically emulate the behavior of the AK-47? Now, just a bit earlier in the year, we had the likes of the SAR skin being accepted. And when that appeared, I thought, oh, Surely it's going to end up exactly like the AK-47 eventually. And the behavior up to, this, up to this point, when I was looking at these skins, I thought the SAR was basically in a perfect spot. Could the Abyss Bow potentially like, pass the negative uh, situation in regards to most Hunting Bow skins? Take a look at them right now. Pretty much every single one of them is down to about a dollar. Unfortunately, Hunting Bow skins just don't seem to do quite all right, unless they're like super colorful or super unique like the special um, legacy bow that was introduced late in 2023, December 2023, made by Face Punch themselves, if you can remember that. So, okay, 
wasn't 100% sure, but I could also consider that the Abyss Collection weapons tend to do quite all right. So, all right, maybe the bow might have been okay. Rainbow Pony, Boonie Hat, and Poncho. So, it wasn't really selling that much, as you can see up to this point here. All of these other skins were getting more attention. Rainbow Pony is one of the largest collections in Rust as a whole. So, just looking at it and considering, I thought, well, you know what? On the horizon, we could still see more skins being accepted. On the horizon, we could probably get the likes of some burlap clothing, hide clothing, you name it. It could happen. But would it happen? I was interested, intrigued, but I wanted to see how much it would sell by the end of the week. Because if it really didn't sell that much, which at the point when I was making the predictions, it wasn't compared to a lot of the other skins, maybe just maybe with a sheer lack of quantity, all the better for it to rise up in price in the future. So I left it at that. I was interested. I just wanted to see what the sales looked like. Then I moved on to talk about the likes of the Neon Oil Rig Garage Draw. So, okay, cool. We got a brand new Neon Monument skin being accepted. And I do believe this was the third one. Yep. So when this was accepted, the Double Door bounced up in price a fair bit. Lighthouse Sheet Metal Door didn't really change that much. Eh, sheet Metal Doors this year. <laughs> so, okay, you're looking cool. You're looking nice. But at this point... Pretty much every single garage door was going down in price. We were about to enter September 2024. We were about to enter the autumn fall seasonal dip. And with so many garage doors being accepted up to that point, I was like, well, surely there's going to be even more accepted. And surely they're going to take away attention from the likes of this. I worry for it. I'm concerned. I'm probably just going to stick with doing a barter. That smart barter can always lead to some success at some point. So cool, 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 cool. So, all right. I felt, you know, reasonably okay to kind of take a bit of a step back on that one. And then we had the likes of the Ratatat Thompson. Now, it wasn't abnormal. I was a bit hesitant, but it was a very interesting, unique design. I thought, surely some people would appreciate the design of this. Like, are we going to get a whole batch of weapons that look exactly like it? Are we going to get a whole batch of weapons that are going to be like cool, strange, angry looking animals? Or is it just going to be a rat collection? Either way, I thought, OK, yeah, no, I could see some potential like interesting things for that. But Thompson's up to this point when it's accepted. Pretty much every single one of them that came out in 2024 was down in price. So still a bit hesitant in regards to that. Then I was talking about the likes of the Cell Bar, Bolt Action Rifle. Um, it was selling at $3. The Cell Collection wasn't exactly super in demand at this point, and uh, I just couldn't help but assume it was going to go down in price. I just didn't think it was going to go dramatically down in price. So looking at the Cell Bolt Action Rifle, I thought, okay, maybe a Smart Bard will be the way to go. Yeah, sure, I'll go with that. And then I talked about the doors. Frozen Crypt Sheet Metal Door looked really impressive to me. I thought, okay, you know, we're just technically just around the corner from the likes of Christmas winter time. Surely that would be appreciated. Surely that could do quite all right, but it's a sheet metal door. It's a sheet metal door. So, uh, full of a took. I'll answer that afterwards. I am actually recording right now. I'm recording. Um, Frozen Crypt Door. I thought, okay, surely we'll see continuations. Surely it'll be all right. But, uh, as a sheet metal door, I just couldn't fully rely. I just couldn't fully have a lot of faith in it. And I haven't even properly talked about this one over here. Cardboard sheet metal door was a bit of a surprise. I mean, look at it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. It's totally fine for what it is. And we've had a few other cardboard skins accepted in the past and whatnot. It's just, this just kind of came out of nowhere. And in the same rust store as a super flashy, cool looking sheet metal door that we just looked at, I kind of worried for that, but also maybe it wouldn't sell too much. Maybe, maybe things could work out quite all right. But if I can recall, there's also a bit of a weird thing with this. When you open the door and you look halfway through, you know, when you look like when it's out, when you look through it, it's it's it, like the, the, the faces are not like put down correctly. Basically, you can see through it. Uh, initially, you thought, oh, could that be some sort of exploit? No, no, no. So, yeah, um, wasn't feeling 100% sure that that was going to be okay. And even that one, the super flashy one. So Sheet Metal Doors this year, I just didn't have that much faith. And then lastly, we have the Tier 3 Toolbox. It was a perfectly fine small box skin produced by Mr. 38 in Alloy that, of course, you'd slot in with the likes of your workbenches there. He's looking so nice and comfy. Cool, 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 cool. But I questioned a non-glowing small box skin especially and again at this specific point pretty much every single small box that came out in 2024 was down in price even the likes of the uh, neon storage collection ones they were struggling pretty bad and something completely independent all by itself would it last would it survive <laughs> i wasn't feeling very confident so that was the skin i was least confident in 
So, all right, cool. We've essentially gone through all of my predictions there in order of what I was most confident in. So shall we now talk about the likes of the progress in regards to what happened to the skins? So now I want to elaborate a little bit further with the likes of the Abyss Bow. So with the Abyss Bow, it wasn't with the skins in the Rust Store initially. It came out like three hours later. What happened was we already had an Abyss Bow skin. It's blue. It looks cool. There's also, a, there's also an old blue uh, abyss crossbow and whatnot so it was technically a collection but with the brand new abyss bow there was a conflict and well this is what happened we had at one point abyss bow and abyss hunting bow at the same time on the steam market now what eventually happened was the abyss hunting bow was the brand new hunting bow but people weren't exactly sure what was going on they thought it was glitched some of these uh, bows here they sold for like 20 dollars because they kick and bought out what eventually happened was uh it wasn't selling for 20 dollars forever was it no <laughs> but yeah there was a conflict on the steam market but it wasn't going to be properly fixed until the actual and brand new abyss hunting bow actually became marketable so i have this video here abyss bow situation win-win situation because i was considering well all of these well both of these skins here had a lot of barders put down already was it going to be enough to keep the price up, keep it supported, stop it from going down a price anytime soon? There's a bit of interest in regards to that, and I had quite a lot of people that watched this, over 2,500 by head standards. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, an interesting detail, but was it still going to help out, was, or was it just going to go down a price like most hunting bows? That was up for debate, um, but we couldn't do anything until, you know, it got to Wednesday. Uh, and I should now also bring up the likes of the first 24 hours of sales. So as I hop over to here, looking at these skins, a lot of skins, you can't see that very well, I'm very sorry to say, but Neon Oil Rig Garage Door, 7,500 subscribers, which is all right, it's fine. For a, for a very large rust door, that sold very well for itself. Commander Hoodie and Pants, well, were they going to match up to the likes of Tier 3 Armour? Tier 3 Armour, if I can recall, sold between 16 to 17,000 subscribers. After the first 24 hours of sales, these had only done 6,500 subscribers. They weren't matching up perfectly to the likes of the uh, face mask, if I could recall, but the chest plate they were. Were they going to match up nicely? And then, of course, we also happen to have the likes of Heavy Knight Tier 3 here. Only 5,500 and 6,000 subscribers for the Tier 3 armor. Huh. Well, the previous week, we saw the likes of the Hoodie and Pants Heavy Knight collection, uh, the Heavy Knight Hoodie and Pants. They only did 13 thousand ish subscribers is this going to catch up is this going to match up or is it going to sell little is it going to sell less well that was also up for debate so yeah initially it didn't really look like these skins were selling that much hmm but again if they don't sell too much all the better for them to rise up in price especially with the collection continuations because normally with the likes of all, all the core pieces the core piece group that sells the least amount as time goes on so as, lo so as long as it keeps demand they tend to become the most expensive pieces because if everybody wants a full collection there's only so much of it to go around and then eventually it rises up in price a lot more faster you get the idea cool so now let's go over to here and talk about the likes of the abnormal builders so let's just quickly zoom in here get a good look at the likes of that so hedge is going to be sitting here and yapping and i'm just going to bring up the prices that we suggested when we looked at all of these skins here so as you can see no neon oil rig garage door 17,200 subscribers Wednesday night going into Thursday morning that had sold quite all right fairly average compared to all the other garage doors that came out that year or this year I should say I was looking at it and I was questioning and I was thinking you know what I'm probably just going to do one dollar to one dollar fifty why is that well I just didn't believe it was going to retain its value that well I knew there was going to be more garage doors at this specific point we had another four months to go and we'd already had like 24 skins accepted the previous year in 2023 we had 27 in total so we're basically looking as if we're easily going to surpass the likes of that in 2024 so with so many acceptances uh, uh, it would be a struggle to maintain interest neon or a garage door mm, i i was really hoping i was really hoping that we were going to see the likes of um more continuations but the skin creator liked to take his time nothing wrong with that but you know maybe it could lose interest pretty quickly so okay okay, okay. one dollar to one dollar fifty i didn't expect it to maintain its two dollar forty nine price i felt that that was totally fine to do so that's what i did commando hoodie and pants so these were selling at two dollars a piece 
they were looking like they were matching up to the likes of the tier three armor uh, the hoodie and the pants both had just over fifteen thousand subscribers at this point it looked fine it looked okay we did some comparisons and whatnot with the uh you know the in-game look and whatnot and uh commander hoodie and pants they were still a little bit reflective but they looked perfectly fine for what they were like they're totally fine and also if you were to compare commander hoodie and pants with the likes of black gold dragon rage pirate collection it was one of the lowest selling blackout alternative options for hoodie and pants ever in most instances they at least sold twenty thousand. looking at the likes of black gold and whatnot but commando it looked as if it was only just about going to do sixteen thousand subscribers not that much lower but still lower the lowest now the actual answer is training hoodie and pants are actually the lowest with like thirteen thousand. but they came out like four or five years earlier and they were already expensive so okay maybe in the future commando hoodie and pants could work out ever so nicely hmm okay cool so i looked at that and i went one dollar to one dollar fifty i thought i think i want to be able to try and pick these up for a decent price i still was under the assumption that would you know see the likes of tier two and hoodie and, uh, tier two armor and of course boots and gloves that would give it a nice boost so yeah i thought it was all right i thought i could go with that that was the price i went with I looked at the likes of the Frozen Crypt Sheet Metal Door. It did almost 14,000 subscribers at this specific point. And I thought to myself, cool looking door, $3 price. Oof. I'm just going to stick with doing 90 cents to $1.30. Because literally, like a week or two before this, didn't we have the likes of a Frog Door and whatnot? That went down in price pretty quickly, less than half its price pretty quickly. This, $3, oof. 90 cents to $1.30 is my suggestion. I thought and I truly believed I'll be picking it up for a much cheaper price. So that's what I went with. Then I looked at the likes of the Heavy Knight Tier 3 armor. I wasn't 100% sure we're definitely going to see another continuation, like three in a row. I know we just had the likes of Ultramarine Collection, but just wasn't 100% sure. But the boots and gloves were on the workshop, and I do believe at this specific point we had Tier 2 as well. I don't fully remember. But anyway, Heavy Knight Tier 3. You look like you're just about to match up with the likes of the uh, hoodie and pants, which is all right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I went with 80 cents to $1.20. I thought, okay, I think I'll just play it a little bit safer. We're about to finish this collection, it seemed. I wasn't 100% sure it was definitely going to you know, be finished. So, yeah. Now, the face mask with the set looked really cool. The chest plate, not so much. Also, I do believe a lot of people just prefer to use the jacket. If you can recall, there was a jacket. People would much rather use the jacket with the likes of the face mask and the hoodie and pants and whatnot compared to the chest plate. So, oof. So yeah, I went with 80 cents to $1.20. Then looking at the likes of the tier 3 toolbox, I wasn't confident in it. I really didn't think it was going to sell well. I went with 60 cents to 80 cents. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. And then Rainbow Pony Poncho, which was... Uh, oh, no, I skipped ahead. Sell bolt action rifle. Um, It didn't sell that much. It didn't look like it was getting that much interest. It was in the rust store for $3. I was like, you don't look like you're retaining your value at all. And I actually went with deciding to do 60 cents to 80 cents. I honestly believe that was going to go down to around a dollar at some point. It really didn't look like I had that much interest. Then we can talk about the likes of the Rainbow Pony Poncho. So the Poncho was abnormal, but not the Boonie Hat. But if we saw there was enough interest in the Poncho, we could jump onto the Boonie Hat. And at this specific point, Poncho and Boonie, they sold hardly anything. Honestly, just comparing the Boonie Hat here, which had 8,000 subscribers at this point, Comparing that with all the other boonie hats that came up somewhat so, uh, that came out somewhat recently, it sold so much less. And this is the Rainbow Pony collection, bright, colourful, happy, one of the largest collections in Rust, and it sold so little. What? Okay, fair enough, understood. Maybe this was actually going to work out quite right. It had lay, it, it had low sales here, but as time goes on, if we do see those continuations, primitive skins, I was like, well, surely this could work out quite nicely. So looking at the poncho. A $1.49 skin, I suggested doing 80 cents to $1.20. That's what I went with because I was just basically assuming that surely it could work out, surely it would improve. That was my thought process. And you might have noticed I haven't talked about the Abyss Hunting Bow until now. It had already become marketable. I'd already done my buy orders. <laughs> so uh, I actually did a $1 barter and a $1.50 barter. 
considering that it's currently sitting there at three dollars sixty four, as you can see right there. If there had already been a bunch of people buying it, and already a bunch of people that put barbers down, so okay, cool. And then the remaining skins, which weren't abnormal, uh, Retatat Thompson. I thought it looked cool. I thought it didn't sell too much with twelve thousand six hundred subscribers at this specific point. I went with eighty cents to one dollar twenty. I thought it would do better, and I was expecting an interesting collection to be built from that. Cool. And then with the likes of the Rainbow Pony Boonie hat, as I said, Rainbow Pony primitive skins here. Look, they're selling too little. I just couldn't help to assume the Rainbow Pony Boonie hat was going to comfortably retain its value during the bad times and potentially rise up in price ever so nicely when it was good, when it was the good times. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to want to wear Rainbow Pony Boonie hat and poncho in the early game. Just be silly. Oh, you know, silly recreational places and whatnot. I'm going to gamble as a pony. Hooray! <laughs> anyway, so with the likes of that, I went with 80 cents, 90 cents for that. And then the cardboard cheat metal door, uh, 60 cents to 80 cents. I just didn't have that much faith in it, I'm afraid. Yeah, just didn't really have any faith in it at all. So, uh, yeah, that was basically everything. So now we can hop over and take a look at the rust door and see how everything turned out. We can see if Hedger was correct or wrong. Check, get ready, you get to laugh at him in a bit, I'm sure. Right, neon oil rig garage door. So, I sat there and said $1 to $1.50, and here's the state of the neon oil rig garage door right here, right now. And yeah, I think I was correct with this one, because as you can see, it's currently sitting here at $2. Highest barter is $1.55. It's all a bit loose here, but yeah. We did not see another continuation being accepted after this. It was produced, but not accepted. So if I could just quickly look in the workshop and show this to you. As you can see, with the likes of the Neon Story Collection, we did see the likes of an interesting looking ne uh, power plant armored door. It looked nice. It looked cool. Each side have a different version of the, uh, the towers. That looked nice, but no acceptance, I'm afraid. Which was quite sad to see. And since then, we haven't seen another one being produced. I would like to see it happen, but... Yeah, that potentially might be the end of the collection. Another deplorable collection that came out in 2024 that ends after two or three acceptances. Oh dear, dear. <laughs> but yeah, looking at the uh, current price, I was correct. We're currently going through the bad times right now. We're almost about to enter the likes of October, and yet it's still sitting there at $2. So if you did a $1.50 buy order, hey, you probably picked up a bunch of them by now, or just a few, or not too many. Main point is... You, it, it, you didn't get dumped on, I'm hoping. So it seems stable at the moment. It seems all right. Will it improve? We shall see. But um, yeah, the barter seemed to be correct there. Cool. Commando hoodie and pants. Oh dear, oh dear. Kind of oh dear, oh dear. So it didn't sell too much. And if we were to just quickly go look at these on the Steam market right now. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Steam. Yeah, Steam's a little bit iffy still. Yeah, you've got to just keep trying a few times and with the refresh. And there we go. Right. So these have gone down in price a bit. And yet, when you look at them, there's only 21 hoodies on the Steam market, and there's only 17 pants on the Steam market. Yes, it dipped down in price, but I don't think it's dramatically bad. So with the buy orders, I suggested $1 to $1.50. Have you bought some hedge? Yes, I have. And I'm not worried at all, because it's still maintaining a decent spot. I think $1.50 might have been its lowest point. Let's just look at its history, because it did go down, and then went bounced back up a fair bit. People are optimistic for it. Also, we did see an interesting continuation quite recently. What was that? Well, we just recently got the Commando AK-47 being accepted. Not hoodie and pants, but, you know, still think that was nice to give it a bit of a boost. And we have seen the likes of boots and gloves being produced. We've also seen the likes of another attempt for Tier 2. But when this was trying to get Tier 2 accepted, it was competing against the uh, Black Diamond and Heavy Knight. All three of them were submitted at the same time, and none of... Well, Black Diamond was accepted. The other two, oh. But I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing a version 3 eventually at some point. And Boots and Gloves have been supplied, so let's see if that gets accepted. And Commando AK-47, you're currently in a rust store right now as a much cheaper option compared to the likes of the Blackout AK-47. So things are looking very nice for this collection at the moment. The hoodie and pants, you have gone down in price ever so slightly. There's a few listings here below $2, and then after that, it's totally fine. It's back to normal. This is the bad times. This is the time where you're supposed to see so many skins absolutely struggling, and yet it's only down by a little bit, and there's hardly any listings. Remember what I said. This is the blackout option for the hoodie and pants, the, um, the alternative that has the lowest sales out of all of them except training. But then again, training came out years ago, and it's already expensive, so cool. All right, that's still looking good. My suggestion for the price, I was correct with this. 
I have bought a few of them for myself. I'm looking forward to January 2025. I'm looking forward to continuations, potentially. Things are looking good. And think about this. What have we got tier two armor accepted right now? Well, that's going to easily get bought out, isn't it? Both of them. That's easily going to bounce up a price. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. I'm not complaining. That turned out perfectly fun. It's holding on. Cool. Frozen Crypto. Oh, look at that. It's selling at $1.34. <laughs> so the funny thing is, this has actually had a collection continuation. We saw the large box being accepted somewhat recently, and that looked cool as well. Very nice and bright. This didn't even budge. This didn't even budge. Yeah, I know. I know. So um, 90 cents to $1.30. That turned out to be okay. But obviously the $1.30 barters have disappeared now. So they got sold to and they're gone. Now, listen, 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 listen. I suggested a price in which you could get it for cheaper. And chances are, if you had that $1.30 bar, you probably bought a bunch of them for a cheaper price. Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. How much lower could it go? I don't think it will be. And I do expect more frozen crypt stuff to be produced. Again, look at the workshop. Look and see what's being produced. We've had the likes of a garage door being produced somewhat recently. Let's, let's see if that gets accepted. I'd like to see a furnace, rug, chair table i'd love to see more let's see what happens so looking at the likes of that again the barter suggestion i don't think i was wrong there but it did drop down pretty quick oh yes it did and it hasn't budged at all even with continuations which you can see right there in front of you so let's see if we do see more of the frozen crypt collection and let's see if people like it around christmas time when it's all cold and wet and horrible <laughs> right let's move on to likes of heavy night tier three so this ended up doing 13,500 ish subscribers the face mask specifically chest plate did 12,500 now comparing that with the likes of the hoodie and pants perfectly fine it's it's slotted in perfectly the likes of these chest plate is the one that sold the least look at that some of these prices have gone down a fair bit and yet the chest plate's just comfortably sitting there up 21 percent because it sold quite a fair bit less, didn't it? How many of these are in the Steam market right about now? Oh, come on, Steam. Yeah, it's it's like this, I'm sorry to say. Go. Thank you. Right. So as you can see, only 40 listings, and we're still hoping to see the likes of the Tier 2 being produced. But as I said, Tier 2 was submitted during the same week we saw Commando Tier 2 being submitted, and of course Black Diamond. So that didn't work out very well, unfortunately, but a version 2 some point in the future? I'm expecting it. I'm hoping for it. I also really want to see this longsword being accepted because it's like the perfect opportunity for a longsword to be accepted. It's called Heavy Knight Face Punch. It's, it's, it's literally perfect. Come on. We haven't had a longsword accepted in seven years, so I can't think of a better opportunity than this. Anyway, so this... Has gone down in price a little bit. Chest plate's been perfectly fine. I actually managed to pick up a couple of these with a builder, funnily enough, but I went too low. Even during the likes of the bad times, this has only gone down slightly. Now, you might have actually picked up a couple face marks potentially because it is down to $1.61, but the chest plate, chest plate actually did, you know, good. It's gone up in price and it hasn't gone down ever since then. So I don't really think I was wrong. But chest plate did end up going up in price, so I'd say it's 50-50. With the likes of the face mask, I felt like I got it right, but with the likes of the chest plate, I got it wrong. But that's what happens when you see a skin sell just a fair bit less compared to the other skins, more specifically core pieces. So that's actually sitting there at $1.52. And the bard is here, yep, around $1.20. So I'm sure some people have picked up these for a cheaper price. And uh, this potentially could be the lowest point. Very likely could. And then from here, it was it's probably going to keep rising and rising and rising. Will we see a tier 2? Will we see any more of those interesting primitive skins such as the crossbow and the longsword? I'd love to see it. But yeah, face mask, I feel like I was correct with you. Chest plate, not so much. So. All right, cool. Next up, we could talk about the likes of the tier three toolbox. Hedge got it wrong. Hedge got it so, 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 so wrong. And I'm led to believe the main reason why this is doing very well at the moment is because we just got an interesting armored door accepted. It was called tier three armored door simple as that but they're not actually a collection here's the funny thing so if i could just hop over to here as you can see this week tier 3 armored door produced by loddy but over to here with the small box here produced by mr 38 so similar idea but um not the same collection but people don't care <laughs> they're happy and it's risen up in price ever so nicely now how much is it selling every day that's another thing we could probably consider looks like it's doing at least 20 so i guess you could say between 10 to 20 yeah, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. But the price, the price doesn't really change that much. It's been stable, it's been okay. 
I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Chat, I got it wrong. You can laugh at me. Laugh at me right now. So if any of you manage to pick some of these up and sell them for a decent profit, feel free to comment below. You're more than welcome to do so. But yeah, I was too passive. I didn't expect much of it. But then again, just look at all the small boxes again and you can basically understand why I'm just not 100% sure of these. So many down in price. But then that one turned out right. Well, <laughs> who could have known we're definitely going to get more um, tier 3 theme skins accepted? Okay, cool. So, yeah, my price of 60 cents to 80 cents was wrong. Played it too passively. Okay, moving on to likes of Rainbow Pony. So, okay, interesting. Rainbow Pony ended up only doing 8,500 subscribers for the boonie hat. And the poncho only did 7,650. Now, as you can see, the poncho has gone down in price. We're going through the bad times. This is not the end of the world. But I did suggest 80 cents to $1.20 for the poncho. And where is it currently sitting? $1.28. Looking at the barders to the right. Oh, look, they're all slightly above $1.20. This is just about perfect. Just about perfect. So right now, bad times. It's sitting here at this price. Only 19 listed on the Steam market. Does that look like it's a bad thing? No. That looks like it ain't going down any lower. That looks like it could easily flourish and rise up in price in the future. I just hope to see more continuations. And if I can recall, we actually went to the workshop page. And did we all comment in here? I think it was the boonie hat. I think it was the boonie hat. Yeah, so on the boonie hat page. <laughs> are we getting burlap? Yeah, are we getting burlap? We want it, little ranger. We want it. I'd love to see it happen. And uh, yeah, boonie hat right here. Perfectly evens. No issue. No problem. Wilders, whilst just a little bit lower, still strong enough to keep the price up. So yeah. All right. 39 of those in the Steam market. And let me also remind you, out of all the boonie hats that came out somewhat recently, you can see that most of them do end up sticking at around a dollar. So if that was a 99 cent skin, he's doing all right. And then look again, 8,500 subscribers versus 16,000, 19,000, 17,600, 10,000. It was the lowest selling one this year. Compare that to like the previous year again, sold less than these as well. How did a boonie hat from one of the biggest collections in Rust sell the least? That's why I can't help but assume it's going to work out ever so nicely in the future. And the bar of suggestions that I suggested, perfectly fine. I got that one correct. Right, so let's now hop over to like some Ratatat Thompson, because I accidentally skipped that. Ratatat Thompson, I looked at you, I thought, okay, you've got an interesting design, you're pretty unique. I was going to offer 80 cents to $1.20. And then whilst it did go down in price, it didn't go down dramatically, and it's been perfectly fine for now. As you can see, it's sitting here at $1.58 on the Steam market, or is it $1.50? It's $1.50. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Barders still there. Still doing good. Still doing okay. Can't complain. Did we see any continuations? We did. It's a bit of an odd collection, this. Wild Aggression collection. We saw the Lone Woof. Ioka being accepted. <laughs> what kind of name is that? Anyway, it is a collection. And I look forward to seeing the next one. Are we going to get Angry Bear, AK-47? Or, um, I don't know. Screaming Ferret Longsword. Give me that, give me that, give me that. <laughs> So, okay, that's cool. Uh, price suggestion was A-OK -okay there. Can't complain, but just look at all the Thompsons that came out this year. These used to be super reliable investments. Not anymore. Wow, every single one of them. Oh, except that one, of course. MK Ultra is still nice, but down 36, down 21, down 16, down 42, down 23, down 46, down 51, down 49. But of course, short up eight. So good for you, I guess. But uh, even last year's ones, the majority are in the negative as well. Bit awkward, but it is what it is. So, all right gone down in price but the bar to price i suggested was a-ok -okay. right sell bolt action rifle so uh this dip dip down it, it, it did dip down in price but it seems to recover a little bit so let's just quickly look at its sales history so i went with 60 cents to 80 cents for the likes of this and uh yeah no it's actually been doing okay i've actually picked up a couple of these for 75 cents so I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but I will sit here and say this. I think it's just basically selling to the buy orders. Um, that is definitely the impression I'm getting. Of course, look at the buy orders. They're quite significantly lower compared to listings, but if nobody lists theirs below $2, I guess it just slowly rises up in price. And it didn't sell that much either. So I have bought a few of these with my buy order, but it turned out to perform a little bit better. I will sit here and say I was slightly wrong with this one. I thought, ah, sell collection, 
take one quick look at it as you can see and it's just not exactly doing super great is it Ooh. uh there's what it is so i kind of thought this might potentially end up like that but no it's only down by 25 percent only only but again how much is it selling every day and is it actually good profit free of sold in the past 24 hours i don't think that's all right but again the price i suggested a bit too low again right then I want to talk about the cardboard sheet in the door, and then I want to save the abyss bow for last. Cardboard sheet in the door, I had nit I had little to no faith in you. I suggested 60 cents to 80 cents. I picked up a few of them for 60 cents. I removed my buy order. Yeah, that went lower and lower and lower. That's that that that's doomed. Yeah. So um um uh, yeah. I said 60 cents to 80 cents, and um yeah. <laughs> went a bit lower than that. I guess you can sit them and say I was wrong. But I'm pretty sure on the day when we did the buy orders, I was like, guys, um, I probably wouldn't even bother doing a buy order. Now, I'm pretty sure I did say that, but anyway, it is what it is. So it went a little bit lower. There's no demand for this. Yep. I, I can't imagine it could go any lower. And look, if someone bought this for 40 cents, who's buying it? Who's buying it? I just don't see anyone buying it. Now, there was an attempt to turn this into a collection. The uh, skin creator did try to get cardboard deplorables becoming a thing, but mm, didn't happen. Garage... Sheep at a double door, armored door. Nah, didn't happen, I'm afraid. So it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but there's no interest. Now we can talk about the Abyss hunting bow. So after all the weird, silly things that was going on with it, the matching names, the change to the names, the, the, the uh, delayed introduction, it now sits here at $1.40. Now, I suggested $1 to $1.50. Okay. It kind of went below with that. Yeah, yeah. I have bought a bunch of these. I have bought a bunch. I'm still hoping and under the impression that the hunting bow here still will end up exactly like the um, the uh, the AK-47, which unfortunately I can't show properly. If I go over to here, I can quickly show from the LR300, there you go, because on SCMM.AVP, the uh, bow doesn't show up. I guess it had the conflicting thing on here as well. Anyway, the Abyss AK-47, last year it came out, initially went down in price, initially, yes, went down in price initially. But then, after that, as we went through the likes of post-Christmas, as we went through the likes of the summer, it rose up in price ever so nicely. So initially, drops down, rises up for post-Christmas, dips a bit during Easter, rises for the summer twice, and now it's starting to dip again. That was sitting here selling for about four, four and a half dollars at one point. Could the same thing happen to the bow? Well, as of now, not exactly. But going back to that bow, I wanted to reiterate this as well. It only did 8,000 subscribers, and Abyss Skin only did 8,000 subscribers? Oh, huh, okay then, sure, that's interesting. That's a bit of a surprise. I think that's partly what's helped this out from not dramatically going down in price. Also, you might see there's 77 listings. There's 50 of them selling above $2.35. If this sells, it's back up to evens, and it looks like it could still rise up in price ever so nicely in the future. A cool-looking bow skin, unique compared to a lot of the other bow skins we've seen in the past. But you just take one quick look at every single bow skin that came out in the past two years, and lo and behold, what do you see? Oh dear, oh dear. Every single one of them, except the special legacy bow, down in price. So it succumbed to that. It wasn't special enough. But whilst these are down by 52, 47, 47, 48, that's only down by 27. Still low, still went down, but not as low compared to these. So it gives me some hope that that can still work out ever so nice in the future. And whilst I suggested $1 to $1.50, it did, it did dip below to a point where it was selling for $1.20 at one point. So I'll sit here and say I was wrong, but only for a short period of time. Then it went back up to being being correct. <laughs> but yeah, it did, it did dip lower. It did dip lower. But now I'm pretty sure people are going to pick it and it eventually go above $2 and it will work out quite nicely. I don't expect it to end up exactly like the AK-47 from the same collection, but still better than what it sold for the Rust store. So, all right, cool. That was that. That was everything. Chat. I got it mostly correct again with the likes of my buy orders. Um, I can't complain. Um, I have picked up a few of these skins here and there. Cheaper prices, so again, can't complain. And basically, I'm just looking forward to uh, January. January tends to be one of the best times to sell your skins. So many people jumping back in. So many people wanting to buy skins. However, last year, or rather earlier this year for the post-Christmas of 2024, it really wasn't that good. The previous year was fantastic, but 2024, not so much. Will 2025 be better? So please don't forget this. With every barter that you've done so far this year, 
you really ought to just go double check your buy orders all right you really 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 should now that's all counter strike stuff but yeah keep an eye on all of your builders that you've done so far this year these prices are still slightly going lower as we enter the likes of october it's expected at some point in october that will be where most skins will reach their lowest point last year in 2023 most skins reached their lowest price during the beginning of october in 2022 most skins reached their lowest price at the end of october so i don't know what's going to be for this year maybe they've already reached their lowest point maybe they're not going to reach their lowest point until november but it's around now now it's not necessarily a bad thing because as you might notice i think some of these skins have already reached their lowest point it's the perfect time to jump in and buy in pick up these skins at their cheapest price hold on to them and flip them during the good times which is just around a corner january 2025 you could pick them up for their cheapest selling it sell them at their potentially their best or walk away with a lot of lovely profit so i'm kind of mumbling and stumbling now it is what it is next week we will discuss the likes of september 5 rust or the september force wipe not that many skins but interesting continuations right there in front of us oh yes indeed yes <laughs> yep so um black diamond did appear and uh yeah it did take away some of the interest that the black uh the uh the uh com the commando hoodie and pants had and of course, you know, Heavy Knight did get those boots and gloves. Wow. And look, Ultramarine Collection came back after one week. Hooray. So cool, 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 cool. Thank you very much for watching me today. I greatly appreciate it. Chat, thank you very much for being there. How many of each? And, uh, oh, Warhead. You really shouldn't spend too much. Only spend what you can lose. All right. Okay. You've got to be smart with your finances. And with that, thank you very much once again. Catch you later. See you. Goodbye.